Hey everybody, and welcome back to Linear Algebra Online. Uh, so the plan for today is to talk about this thing called the Gram-Schmidt process, which is really sort of what we've been building to for a few videos now. Um, what this thing is going to do is basically it's going to give us um, a way to find a new orthonormal basis, like one that really is describing the same space as the maybe a basis we get, like these two, um, but they're going to be orthonormal, um, the vectors. So uh, that can be really helpful for a ton of different things. We've already seen like how some computations get a ton easier when things are orthonormal. Um, and really, they're just liked more in a lot of applied mathematics because of that. Uh, there's a lot of um, like Python algorithms and whatnot where the speed of it is drastically improved if you can just do something like Gram-Schmidt to make uh, your basis vectors perpendicular and length one. Um, so it's, um, it's pretty computational. It's not like super theoretical, um, but it can be hard to visualize what's happening in higher dimensions and it extends really nice to higher dimensions. So I'm gonna try to talk about that a little bit and then um, really just get into examples and show you how we do it. So, um, so right now, this set right here, um, this is, these two vectors are basically, think of them spanning like some plane, like W here. And these are not um, perpendicular, right? If you do, um, you know, the dot product, you get negative two, um, you get negative two. <laughs> um, and so these things are not perpendicular, um, but they would definitely span some sort of plane. And what we can do is we can kind of use orthogonal decomposition um, to kind of get us started, okay? So the first step of Gram-Schmidt is actually to, um, you're going to basically always use one of the vectors that you're given. You're just going to use, here I'm just going to use x1, but that's going to basically form part of my orthonormal set. So my orthonormal set will basically be the yellow and the blue here in the end. Um, this is like x2, think of it, right? And orthogonal decomposition is that thing that says that any vector we have can be um, described as um, be like the sum of two perpendicular um, vectors, right? Um, I know I said this in another video, but you can think like the vector 1, 2, right, is 1, 0 plus 0, 2. Um, this is like orthogonal decomposition. Any vector at all can just be split up into a sum of um, perpendicular components like that. And so um, the way we do this, right, is the notation we kind of use is, let's just use the other time. Um, so x2 here could equal like the projection of x2 onto x1, right, this one. Um, I want red there. So just do green. And then uh, plus the uh, perp vector of x2 onto x1. Right? And I don't know, we'll do like purple. Um, that is actually going to be this v2. So maybe I should have done it in purple. But, um, but yeah, if you go purple, green, Right, you get um, this vector right here. So, um, you know, typically, uh, a lot of times you'll see think these kind of things should be called W plus W perp. Um, basically thinking that there's like a, um, this is like a, uh, maybe we shouldn't use W because W is here. Um, let's do like, um, I don't know, alpha and alpha perp. But there's like some subspace, like this line alpha, and then there's like a perpendicular uh, subspace alpha perp here. Um, and a vector like x2 could always just be described as like alpha plus alpha perp, okay? Um, and so to get uh, v2, it's really this vector, v2, that's like what we want, right? Um, it's just uh, what I kind of have up here. We're gonna use orthogonal decomposition, which we already kind of put out down here and then just vector subtraction. So um, if we want V2, right, all we gotta do is, um, so this is also V2, right? Um, 
we just basically do x2 minus the projection of x2 onto x1. And that's going to equal v2. And um, so, yeah, so if you just do um, the projection of x2 onto x1, um, so you just do negative 2, 0, 1, that's x2, minus, uh, let's see, minus x2 dotted with x1 over um, x1 uh, dotted with x1. And then that thing times um, x1, which is 1, 1, 0. So if you just do that out, okay, um, you will get negative 1, 1, 1. And, um, and so this vector is uh, v2. And now um, v2, um, whoops, well, sure, uh, x1, I'm just going to call it, oh boy. Um, x1 and v2 are my ortho, um, or, well, my uh, perpendicular vectors. And then if I wanted to get a orthonormal set, right, I could just normalize these things, which is super easy to do too, right? Um, but this honestly is like the, the fundamentals of Gram-Schmidt. And if you kind of understand what's going on there, then you'll be able to see how this extends to higher dimensions. Um, so um, this is really all we're gonna basically be doing is, um, and I'm gonna show you it in general in the next slide, but just keep this in mind. And if you extend to higher dimensions, you can just keep doing this projection idea and this vector subtraction, and you would get perpendicular vectors. Um, so this is it. So in a fully, um, you know, general format, this is um, the Gram-Schmidt process. So what we sort of just did was like a two-dimensional uh, Gram-Schmidt. So you always just take, so x1 through xk is a basis for some subspace. And um, you just let x1 equal like v1. You just like the first, um, whatever you want, the first basis vector, you can just let that be. Um, the first vector v in your perpendicular set, um, your orthogonal set. And then we just did this, okay? So this is, the second vector is going to come from taking x2, right? x2 um, minus the projection of x1, which now they're just calling v1 here, um, on uh, uh, the, the projection of um, x2 two onto v1, right? Yeah, um, and that's what that is. And if you wanted to go one dimension up, um, you basically just keep doing these projections, okay? And um, there's actually two really good videos online um, that kind of show how this Gram-Schmidt thing works for 3D. Um, obviously, it's really hard to draw it in 4D, um, but the nice thing is that it, it really just, um, it extends very, very naturally. Like you, if you want to get V3, okay, you have to have done V1 and V, these first two. It's like very much a step-by-step -step thing. You have to do this step, this step, this step, right, in order. Um, to get a third um, perpendicular vector, you would just take whatever your third vector is in here, and you do, um, so X3, minus, uh, this is just the projection of x3 onto v1, and then x3 onto v2, right? And then if you had a fourth, it would be v4, right, from here. Um, or sorry, v4 is an equal x4, which is from here, minus the projection of x4 onto v1, minus x4 onto v2, um, minus x4 onto x3, onto v3. Sorry, V3. And, um, and so on and so on and so on, okay? Um, and um, this is kind of how the picture looks in 3D. Um, so you can get, um, you know, you can get these, these, these two down here can be like your perpendicular vectors, U1 and U2. And you're doing these projections, V1 onto U1 and U2. Um, like this is like the next one you're trying to make like perpendicular 
And so the little projections that we're doing here and here in like the third step would basically be <clears throat> those little arrows right there and there. Um, and, um, and as long as you build it in order, you can build it up um, and have everything be perpendicular. Um, so that's the idea. All right, so um, definitely easiest to just sort of see an example of this, and um, that's what I want to do right here. So um, the first thing is to just let, um, so, so we're basically going to, this is a basis for um, like a plane in um, R4, okay? So it's, uh, not a plane, sorry. <laughs> it's um, three-dimensional space in R4. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, and so, but right now, this set is not um, orthogonal. Um, and so uh, we want to make it orthogonal. And actually here too, I'm also saying orthonormal. So I'll show you how we can easily do that. Um, so whenever you're doing Gram-Schmidt, you can always just take um, this first vector as like V1. Okay, so we're just going to build off of um, there. You can almost think you're like one third of the way there if you want to think about it that way. Um, and then uh, V2, my next vector in my set, is just going to be X2 minus the projection of X2 onto V1. Okay, um, and so in this case, uh, you get 2, 1, 0, 1, uh, minus... So we get x2 minus this, which is the projection of x2 onto x1. This is x1, right? And if you do that out, you'll get this. Um, this is just like uh, one half in here. So um, two minus uh, a half, three halves, and so on, so on, so on. Um, so this thing um, is uh, v2. So now we're kind of two thirds of the way there. Um, and this is where um, this kind of comment comes in. So uh, when we build V3, right, um, V3 is going to be uh, X3 minus the projection of X3 onto V2 minus the projection of X3 onto V1. And um, to do that, right, um, that uses um, V2 and, and V1, right? And all that really matters right now, like we want to, or, um, we want the direction right now, and then we can worry about normalizing these vectors at the end. But there's no sense in working with um, these annoying kind of fractions. Uh, you can absolutely like scale V2 or V3, um, or really any vector you want. Um, just so you don't have to deal with like annoying numbers, like annoying fractions here. So, um, you know, this, um, the way I would probably do it, right, is I would just do, um, instead of X projecting X3 onto V2, I would project X3 onto like 2V2. And <clears throat> the direction is still going to be the same, right? Um, so it's not going to mess up the direction of V3, but, um, you know, it is going to give you a, a scalar that's probably too large. Um, and so um, what we'll have to do at the end anyways is to normalize everything, but that won't change my final answer because I'm just keeping the direction and then I'll just shrink everything from there. Um, so I would do this, actually. I would do projection of X3 onto 2V2. Um, so I think... Um, I will just sort of write what you should get. Um, it's really pretty just straightforward computational stuff. Um, so you get negative a half there, you get zero, one half, and one. Um, and so that is um, V1, V2, and V3. So directionally, they are perpendicular to each other. It's always good to um, check some of these things. Like if you do, um, just take these two, okay? negative a half, right? I'm dot producting them. Negative a half minus a half is negative one plus one is one, or sorry, zero. Um, and I promise you they're all going to be good. Um, you can go through and check like, you know, this one and this one. You can see because um, you have like three halves minus three halves, right? And then you got one or negative a half plus a half. Um, so, um, 
they're all perpendicular, which is good. But if we want an orthonormal basis, we're going to need to um, normalize all of them. But that's really nice. You can just do that at the end. You can do V1 over the magnitude of V1. Um, and in that case, this one would be 1 half, negative 1 half, negative 1 half, 1 half. And then you could do V2 over the magnitude of V2. And that is going to be 3 root 5 over 10, 3 root 5 over 10, <coughs> root 5 over 10, and root 5 over 10. And then last but not least, just do V3 over the magnitude of V3. And um, you would get root 6 over 6, 0, root 6 over 6 again. And then, oh, and this is negative. Um, and then root 6 over 3. And that's it. Um, so, you know, probably the hardest part about this is just the idea of how this works in 3D. Um, and it really does just build off of this idea. You're just doing these orthogonal decompositions in higher dimensions, which we sort of saw in the last videos. Um, I do think these videos will help, and I will talk about them um, in class, but, um, but it's very algorithmic. And there's actually calculators out there that do these things sort of for you. So you can pump in um, a basis set, um, and it will pump out an orthogonal um, or even orthonormal set. And, uh, you know, you obviously need to know what it's doing, which is why we teach you these things. But um, computing it by hand isn't obviously done too much in the real world, especially because this original set might be a mess and might have like horrible numbers anyways. So you might not be able to even work nicely with them like this. Um, but that is kind of the um, general structure of it. I wanted to talk about just one more quick thing in this video. So um, sometimes you'll see stuff like this. So um, you might be asked to just find an orthogonal basis for R3 that contains this vector 1, 2, 3. Okay, so, um, you know, basically you're sort of, you know, this is your x, y, z axis, right? You're going 1, 2, 3. And we're going to say it's like there or something. Um, and so what you're trying to do is you're trying to build off of this, right, like another, um, like, perpendicular, um, like, coordinate system, right? And the way to do that, if you're ever asked to do something like this, is definitely just Gram-Schmidt. Um, basically, it's, it's the same problem as the last one, but here, um, uh, you know, you don't have three to work off of. You just have one. And so um, you still want to do this process, but you, um, you basically need to construct these. And a lot of times you can be kind of smart um, for the first one. So um, you basically could make a, another vector to this one that you can probably craft to be um, you know, perpendicular. So you could do something like, um, uh, you know, uh, V2. Uh, it could start off as like one, um, one. And then this one we can just solve, right? Because we can just do something like uh, V1 dot over V2. And we would get one plus two uh, plus three, like X or whatever, right? And we want this to be zero. And so we can see that like x just needs to be um, uh, negative 1, right? And so then we get v2. So these kind of problems are actually a little quicker than Gram-Schmidt because you, once you have one, you can kind of usually get another one, right? And then now you basically just need to do Gram-Schmidt. Like it's, you can either, um, you know, at this point you could just quickly um, do like V3 is, or sorry, I'll call it like X3 is uh, 2, 0, negative pi or something. You just make like another vector, right? And then you can just do sort of one Gram-Schmidt step. So you can do V3 is going to be um, equal to X3 
minus the projection of x3 onto v2 minus the projection of x3 onto v1. Um, and so you have two of these already that are nice and perpendicular, and then you just like construct another random vector. You don't even have to really think about it, right? Just make it not um, a scalar of these two, just point in like a little different direction. That's why I did like zero in there. And then um, you just do this one little step, and um, that's just another quick way to finish out a problem like that.